as the American working class loses all that was gotten in the 1930s, its wages go nowhere anymore, especially since the 1970s. So how does the standard of living keep going up? You, you say to the workers, we'll lend you the money. We're not raising your wages anymore. We're making more and more profit off you because we're computerizing and robotizing and artificial intelligence. So we're making a fortune. We're not going to raise your wages, but we're making so much money. Here's what we'll do instead of raising your wages. We're going to take some of the profit we get by ripping you off, by not paying you the higher wages, even though you're more productive every year than you were the year before, we will turn around and lend you some of the money we ripped off of you. That way, not only do we get the benefit of keeping your wages low, but you're going to have to pay us back, and you're going to have to pay us interest between the time we lend you the money and when you pay us back. We're going to make even more money off of you. And the American working class, knowing not what to do, having no left wing to mobilize, says, oh, okay, I guess I'll have to borrow. I'll have to borrow for my home and my car and my credit card and my student getting an education. The American working class becomes very angry, deeply angry. It's being ripped off. It kind of knows it. It's losing all those government programs that saved it. It knows that, too. Now, for part of the population, there is an offset. And here comes the splits of America today. The offset is the Democratic Party, unable or unwilling to contest against the capitalists who become their donors, the dominant voice in the culture, the old progressive Roosevelt fading into forgotten history, the new Democrats, the center Democrats, the Clintons, the Obamas, all of that. They decide we got to give our people something, our workers, our African-Americans, our women, the people who really got to leg up in the 1930s from progressive politics. We got to give them something. So in the years since the 1970s, they got something. You know what they got? What they were demanding in the 1960s. We did get some, some amelioration of the racism in this culture, some amelioration of the sexism in the culture some recognition of the environmental issues of the culture. The Democratic Party became the party of all of those interests. It was a compensation, an offset, something that the left in America could focus on if, please, it wouldn't go near the issues of socialism and communism and the critique of capitalism. That had to be shut down. That was impermissible. That was the taboo. And much of the left in America fell for that. The issues of racism, sexism, environment are very important. They had been neglected. This was something you could focus on with your leftist impulse and grumble a little bit that you couldn't criticize capitalism, but you kind of knew that that was dangerous to do. So for a while, that worked. But you know, it couldn't continue to work because it was all a ruse. Whatever was done for women, for blacks, for environmentalists, didn't change the basic dynamic in which the rich got richer and everybody else didn't. The inequality of the United States gets worse and worse across the 70s, 80s, 90s, and both of the decades of this century. It's unremitting. Capitalism moves on, and you can do your little left wing cultural activity. Just don't interfere with us. And you know, after a while, people catch on. Even the gullible left of America caught on. And that's why we now see two things. A progressive wing of the Democratic Party, which sees it and fights it. Not enough, but they do. We have people who are called socialists winning elections and having a position inside that party and pushing. We all saw what Bernie did. We all saw what AOC is doing and so on. We also have even more important, 
a sudden explosion of a labor movement, a militant labor movement, unionizing, striking. Starbucks is not the union free enterprise it boasted it was, nor is Amazon, nor are fill in the blank. Workers are figuring out, yeah, I might be this, I might be that, but I'm a worker and I need to be protected against a system that is not taking care of me. It didn't take care of me with COVID. It didn't take care of me in the crash that came with COVID. It's not taking care of me with the inflation. I better join a union. I got nothing else. And you know what won't be far behind a revived socialist, communist, and other left-wing parties? Because the unions by themselves can't do it. And they are learning. They're seeing now the importance in their unionizing and striking efforts of the community support they can develop. But I want to also turn to you not only about the split inside the Democratic Party, but the split over on the other side. Here's what happened to the other part of the working class. The other part not only saw that the benefits they got in the New Deal were being taken away from them in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and the whole 75 years since the end of World War II, but they reacted by also noticing correctly that the cultural shift in America was toward multiculturalism, multiracialism, women being finally lifted up through their own efforts from the subordinate secondary position they had been put into. And these people were horrified. It meant that not only was their economic well-being being taken from them, but so were all the cultural realities they had come to rely on, all the people who prided themselves that maybe they were this and they were that, but they were at least white, or they were at least male, or they had some place in that old culture that had taught them it's good to be white, it's better to be white than not to be, and on and on. So we developed in this country the left wing into anti-racism, anti-sexism, environmentalism, but a right wing that wanted to reestablish the good old days economically by having a job that was secure with benefits. They never got that. They couldn't get it. It was not there. And you know what happened to them? Because they could not get economic restitution, because they could not reverse their decline economically, they became all the more, here we go now, enraged about the denial of their culture, their culture of patriotism, their culture of white supremacy, their culture of religious fundamentalism. In an ironic twist, the reaction to capitalism's predations in the last 75 years produces the majority of the Supreme Court today. They want to take the country back. They are Mr. Trump's court, MAGA. Make America good in their view again. None of them faces the economic catastrophe capitalism has worked on this country. So instead, the country splits apart into red and blue states, into those who allow and favor abortion and those who want to stop it, those who don't want a limitation on religion. They want religion everywhere. They want to have the culture if they can't have the economic security. Culture is the war place, but capitalism is the war. It's fought out in these cultural splits. And like the war in Ukraine and like the fight between the United States and Russia, it can end the world. 